here is how I destroyed the iconic leaning tower of Pisa in Italy. I started by making camera tracking on some drone footage that I purchased online. Then I selected a bunch of points in the floor and I was able to rebuild the geometry using 3D markers to mesh function. This is actually a mesh composed of just vertices. When you start filling these points, you are able to have a very nice starting point for rebuilding the environment. Following the same concept, I also rebuilt a very rough shape of the church, which I am gonna use just as a shadow catcher, eventually a holdout, but for sure I'm gonna use it as a collider for the particles and the rigid bodies. After that, I extended the boundaries of this floor by simply extruding some edges. Now, I needed a clean plate, a version of the footage without the tower. So I combined together some texture painting together with some actual 3D geometries that I placed in strategic places in the floor. And all of this setup combined together, seen from the camera, basically is completely hiding the tower. Finally, I got my clean plate footage. I described this process more in detail step by step in this tutorial that you can find in my Patreon. After that, I needed a 3D model of the Pisa Tower, so I took the model from Google Maps and I imported that in Blender. The process for making this possible is very confusing and full of problems. I made this as simple as possible for you in this other tutorial that you can watch in my Patreon as well. After that, I isolated the tower from the rest of the geometry that I don't need and I simply placed that in the right place, scaling and rotating until it was happy. Now, since this was supposed to be for destruction purpose, I needed to remesh the geometry because it was a complete mess. The remesh didn't really work, so I ended up simply deleting the remesh modifier and I just accepted to have a completely messed up geometry. Now, looking at some references online, I noticed some internal stairs and structure that was pretty interesting and I decided to do the same because why not? Let's add more geometry to this already messed up object. So I built some internal walls and some stairs. I also remade the texture from scratches because I didn't really like the texture coming from Google Maps. So I combined together a bunch of noise texture and when I was happy with that, I'm wrapping the faces and hitting the bake button in cycles so that I can replace all of this node setup with one single image texture, which is necessary if you are going for destruction. On top of that, I also texture painted some additional elements like the door and other stuff. At the end, I was pretty happy with that. It's more than enough for what I need, also because this is supposed to be seen from very far. Friendly reminder, you should never try to fracture an object with this huge amount of vertices. This is literally hike, but just recently, I figured out a new workflow that lets me to fracture even the most messed up geometry in the world. You can find a tutorial explaining all of this in my Patreon as well. So I'm not scared anymore, even if I have a very messed up geometry. It just requires a little bit of patience because of the slow fracturing process. I separated the base from the rest of the tower. And finally it was time to jump into the core part of the destruction process. RBD Lab add-on for Blender. You can find this add-on on Blender Market. I leave you the link in the description if you are interested. So I started scattering a bunch of points and for this time I wanted to really exceed all my previous experiments in Blender by going literally high with the amount of max chunks. I decided to go with 1500 broken chunks, which is pretty high. With this completely messed up geometry, it requires a lot of waiting times when you hit the fracture button. After that, as expected, by following my new technique for fracturing, I was able to get correctly my fractured tower. Now, in every lab Aaron, you can basically switch at any time from the low poly versions of all these broken chunks to the high poly versions. The high poly versions they look better, they have a lot of additional details in the cracks and stuff. The low poly version instead are suitable for physics simulation and for speeding up the viewport performance. So potentially I would work always just showing the low poly version. The high poly are gonna be there just invisible. They are gonna show up only when you render the scene. This is a very cool function. Now, it was finally time to jump into the physics part and so I simply activated the rigid bodies. First thing to do when you activate the rigid bodies is to check if your rigid bodies explode or just fall down. In this case they work correctly. If they explode you just have to clean up the geometry of the rigid bodies, resetting the origin in the center as well. After that I selected a few chunks in the base and I set them as rigid bodies passive so that uh, they are not gonna move and I can have a little bit of irregular pattern at the base. Now it was finally time to jump into the constraint panel because I wanted to connect all of these rigid bodies together and especially my favorite the way of using constraints is by having clusters Clusters is one of the functions that I was waiting since a very long time and is there now in RBD Lab Aaron. Basically you can generate big broken parts of your object. These broken parts are gonna fall on their own 
and when they hit the ground they are gonna shatter in smaller parts which will give me a much more realistic result in the destruction simulation first test with the physics and it looks already pretty cool here is my final constraint setups the red lines are basically the strong constraints I usually like to use a very low strength for the intra-clusters blue constraints and instead the red constraints are gonna have a much higher strength so that basically you're gonna see the tower breaking first in big chunks and later they are gonna shatter more in smaller and smaller parts also all this way of visualizing the constraints in RBD Lab Aeron is amazing at this point I wanted to have some extra fun by playing a little bit with the activators function basically where these cubes are gonna intersect their jibadi they are going to activate some specific function. In particular, in this case, whenever this cube is going to intersect the rigid bodies, it's going to melt down all the constraints intersecting this cube. As a result, I got exactly the simulation that I was having in mind. With the tower starting to collapse from the base, all the tower falling down in just one piece and then destroying when it hits the floor. When the physics look okay, usually I make a bake of the dynamics and I export a render from the viewport, viewport render animation, which is very fast. Usually takes just some seconds the priority is just to check that uh, the speed of the simulation is okay if it's too fast or too slow now is the time to adjust it so it was okay but uh, I decided to delete this bake because simply the stupid tower was keeping going in the wrong direction was hitting the church and this was uh, creating extra problems that I didn't want to face to fix this I added a couple of uh, forces that can basically push the tower in the direction that I wanted and this basically fixed the problem for me now I baked again all the physics because I was happy and was time to add that uh, extra level of detail with particles. I always literally boost the amount of particles because they don't really charge your computer like rigid bodies. And especially RBD Lab Aeron has made an amazing job in managing the particle systems. Basically it calculates automatically the speed and the distance between all the broken chunks and it multiplies those values combining them together with the emission of the particles. Now, the first thing I noticed is that all my particles were exploding in the air. The reason is simple is because I have two forces. To fix that, I just went into the particles options in RBD Lab Aeron and I decreased the force influence to zero. By doing this, the forces are gonna just push the rigid bodies of the tower, but not the particles. I also activated the collision for all the environment objects like the church and the houses and the floor so that uh, they are gonna interact with the particles as well. Now, here is a common problem with the particles. Basically, I call this the popcorn effect. You can see these uh, little particles literally going in the air in the moment of the collapse. This is a common problem when using object velocity option in the particle systems. And just recently, the guys of RBD Lab has found an amazing fix that is very simple. You just need to increase the subframes to just one and update. And basically, this fixes the problem for you. It was something that was very annoying for a very long time. So that's a life saving your solution. At this point, it's not convenient that every single broken chunk will emit particles for real. Just uh, some of them. In particular, in RBD Lab Aeron, there is this very useful selection tool that is based on the size of the chunks. You just tweak this number until you are happy with the selection, and then you go in the mute option, and this will turn off all the particle systems only in these selected chunks. This has a huge impact in the viewport performance and also in the speed of the render and especially in the realism of your simulation. Now, I can tweak the particles forever, but I decided that I want to jump into the smoke part. I exported two alembic from Blender to Embergen. So I exported one single alembic for the environment, which is gonna be a collider for the smoke and another alembic for just the collapsing part of the tower. So the tower is gonna be the emitter of the smoke and the environment instead is just gonna interact with collisions. It was just a big pleasure to work in Embergen simply because it works in real time. If you know what I'm speaking about, the smoke simulation part it was always a nightmare back in the days until Embergen arrived. Simply because in all software, this smoke simulation and similar are extremely slow. Instead, in Embergen now, everything is going so fast and has become the most fun part of the process. I can spend days having fun and tweaking all the options. However, once I was happy with my smoke simulation, I exported that VDB sequence and I imported that in Blender. Back to Blender, I simply had to realign the position of my VDB sequence closer to the tower and finally everything was working very well together. After some tweakings in the shader for the smoke with the density and the color, I also realized that there was simply too much smoke in the tower zone and basically the tower was not visible. And so I decided instead to create this system in 
blender directly in the shader for which basically where there is this empty the smoke density is zero and it works pretty fine now it was time to add an additional level of details production create is the best way to go basically it's a website in which you can download a bunch of stock elements in video formats that you can easily import in blender using the import images as plain add-ons that comes by default with blender all these additional elements are not going to charge your computer because they are just flat planes with a video textures that easily increase the level of realism and detail on your simulation so i imported a bunch of ground cracks in parts and similar until i was happy with the result and finally it was time to export everything and jump into the compositing part color matching and color correction and also some additional problem with the masking of some walking people and after a bit of compositing this is the final result Thank you very much for watching, consider joining my Patreon, which you can get more frequently posted tutorials and asset and original projects sometimes. I'll see you in the next one.